it's great for players. I think it's great for the organizations, and I think it's really good for the fans. Football fans celebrate around the country as a deal is reached. Why didn't they show a badge? How did my dad know it was an undercover cop? A family asking questions tonight after a man is shot by an Aurora policeman. We're learning more about the shooter. I can't tell you what this means to us. Amy was about one thing, and that was love. Family and fans of Amy Winehouse mourning the Grammy Award-winning singer's death over the weekend. And check this out. Some people are calling this wiggly creature dinner. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Deborah Takahara. And I'm Jeremy Hubbard. Our top story tonight, NFL players vote to okay a final deal ending a four and a half month lockout. And Todd Romero is live at Dove Valley where the Broncos are wasting no time already getting back to business. Todd? Yeah, they certainly are not. All right. Thanks, Dave. The man of a family of a man killed by a plainclothes Aurora police officer is speaking out tonight just as Aurora police are offering more details about what happened. Channel 2's Kim Posey is live in Aurora with more. Kim? Well, Deb, the suspect who was shot and killed was 59-year-old. The death of Amy Winehouse over the weekend has left music fans saddened. Yeah, still ahead, we'll have the latest from London, where her family's mourning side by side with her fans. Plus, China's dreams of high-speed travel come to a crashing and deadly halt. Also ahead, a Bronco speaks out about the rape charges against his colleague Parrish Cox. Stick around. It may be weeks before we know how singer Amy Winehouse died. After completing an autopsy, officials in London could not pinpoint a cause of death. They're now waiting on toxicology reports. Meanwhile, fans continue to gather outside her apartment in London where her parents spoke well, today. Looking around, you may have noticed that we have a new look around. I know, that's right. Not only do we have a new set, new backdrop, new graphics, but we've got a new website as well. Be sure to log on to kwgn.com and check it all out. The news you can use and some pretty entertaining features as well. It looks pretty good. I like think? it. Not Very too shabby. Very Colorado. Very Colorado. <laughs> We're Colorado's own. Yes. <laughs> I don't I think so. it should win the record if you can't actually use it. That's the what thing. I was yeah. just thinking. Come on. If you can't ride it, it doesn't qualify it's not as a bike. bike. Yeah. It's just a big exactly. goofy looking thing in the middle <laughs> yeah. of Iowa. Yeah. Right? So put a train on it, get some pedals. Let's get going. I'd like to see some people. And a ladder, get up there. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. really. Hey guys, the heat continues out there today. Uh, unfortunately, 11 days in a row. It hasn't been terrible. We've been getting some late-day clouds and some storms. We kept things dry today, but those monsoon rains with the threat of flooding, coming back as early as tomorrow. Let's get to work with a look at live radar, and I'll show you where the action has been today. It's all been off to our south and south relatively west. dry, so we're going to enjoy a quiet evening. Numbers today, 95. The high temperature only four away from the record of 99, set back in 1963. Your sunset tonight at 820, up tomorrow at 552. Look at these high the temperatures and back towards Telluride, where they've had the clouds and the rain. Temperatures there just a tad cooler in the upper 70s and low 80s. Here's a live look outside right now. Looking off to the west of the city, there are a few dark clouds, but what we've been noticing is these clouds come overhead. They're just producing gusty wind, and the reason for that, humidity is low. So 85, the current temperature, humidity low, and the wind is a little bit gusty out of the south at 25 and miles south an hour. side of town. Temperatures there in the upper 80s and low 90s. Tonight, evening clouds, gusty wind, and mild overnight low of 64. 93 tomorrow, as we stay on the hot side, the humidity will start to inch up, and that's going to lead to those scattered thunderstorms. Your weekly planner, monsoons back Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We may break the 90 degree heat on Wednesday with 89. We'll slide in two more days for you, get you through your weekend. Right now, the storms wrap up on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday are dry. And we return to the hot side, especially on Sunday with a high of 94. Hey, on Thursday afternoon, weather pending, we will be outside grilling Frazier's favorites. We'd like to see your best grilling recipe. Email it to us at recipes at kwgn.com. And check out our new website while you're there, guys. I'm keeping my fingers crossed <laughs> that the monsoon rains and the wind stay away so that we can get outside on Thursday. Yeah, yeah we've been rained out for several weeks. I know. That grill's got some dust on it. <laughs> yeah. We need to dust we'll it off. it off. All right, Dave, thanks. Well, a Denver teen attacked by a grizzly bear. And he managed to survive. Coming up next, how rescuers are crediting the 17-year-old and his friends for keeping themselves alive. Plus, car owners in one neighborhood wake up to a mess in the driveway. And at the curb, we'll tell you where this happened.
And just look at these people waiting in line for the opening of the grand opening of IKEA. It looks like they've got everything but furniture. Well, they have some There's furniture already pen. out there in <laughs> tents, and we're going to show it to you all when we come back. Now, the CenturyLink Sports Desk. Well, after that long, drawn-out affair known as the NFL lockout, it's somewhat ironic that Broncos training camp is actually scheduled to start exactly when it would have before we had any labor problems. That's this Thursday at 8.50. You can show up at Dove Valley for the first workout the team will hold. Admission and parking, as always, are free. You can get the entire schedule of training camp so far on our website, KWGN. In the team Dot competition. So most of the credit is going to go to the man wearing the yellow jersey, as it always does. Mm -hmm. But Boulder has a great culture of cycling. An American finished ninth, Tom Danielson. He's from Boulder, so the highest American finisher of Colorado and in the top ten. Yeah. So all the glory usually goes to the one winner, but the team aspect, which is always helpful, Lance Armstrong and so many people win over the years yeah. is straight Boulder. So awesome. this this guy was 34 and the oldest? Right. You know how it is in sports. When you're uh, over 30, it's right. practically time to retire. <laughs> yeah, the rest right. of us are just starting their lives. They're on act two at that point. We're old men now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Sure. For most all of Friday, all of Saturday, Sunday, and next Monday. Still some summer sizzle to enjoy. Yeah. I like how your graphics move in like that. Yeah, Very I just whistle. Fancy. Come on in. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. All right, here's a story that brings new meaning to the term hot Dog. That's right. A Massachusetts baseball team has introduced what may be the world's most expensive hot dog. You can't afford it, Jeremy. No, right. <laughs> yeah. It is selling at stadium kiosks for a whopping eighty dollars. The Brockton Roxes McMullen dog features a half pound all beef sausage rolled in truffle oil, coated with a dust of pulverized porcini mushrooms, Ooh, those are good. and topped with white truffle shavings. The bread roll is handcrafted by one of Cape Cod's most exclusive bakeries. That's a challenge for Frazier's favorites this Thursday. <laughs> Live up wow. to that. Beat one that. would feed the four of us. Right. We'll see you tomorrow.